My name is Basim Uthman. I'm professor of neurology, clinical neurology, and clinical neuroscience. I also serve as the vice chair of uh, neurology here in Qatar for the Wild Cornell Medicine. We're all bound to have headaches sometime during our life. The first question that you have to ask yourself, are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Are you sleep deprived? There's so many things you can do in order to prevent headaches or just take care of an occurring headache right now. So guess what? We live in Doha and there's a lot of heat around and we get dehydrated and sometimes we just get too lazy to go ahead and drink. Maybe because we're so concerned we don't want to go to the bathroom, but guess what? You get dehydrated and you're going to have headaches. If you're hungry, hypoglycemia, low blood sugar can cause you to have some headaches and headaches can happen to anybody, male, female, young, pediatrics, older people. People. Just a few things that you have to think about. Take care of yourself, your nutrition, your hydration, your sleep, and if there's any stressors, think about it. Stress can cause headaches too. Those headaches that occur without any particular obvious secondary cause underlying those problems. And these can be composed of the migraine headaches, tension headaches, cluster headaches, trigeminal neuralgia, and some other rarer disorders like glossopharyngeal neuralgia and the chronic paroxysmal hemicrania. Let's start with migraine headaches. Now, migraine headaches is a recurrent disorder that is associated with one of the following is nausea and or vomiting, photophobia or phonophobia. Photophobia means that there's sensitivity to bright light and phonophobia, there's sensitivity to noise. Also, it is characterized by two or more of the following. It's usually unilateral, meaning on one side of the head, right or left. It is pulsating, that is pounding, and it is normally moderate to severe in intensity and it is aggravated by usual physical activity. No wonder why a patient with migraine headache would tell you the best thing I can do is to sleep it off in a dark room and all TV and all noises are off. Now it normally lasts for a few hours to maybe sometimes days and it is more predominant in women. Now you've heard about migraines with auras. Typically migraines do present with auras. Auras usually develop over minutes and the headache should usually develop within an hour from the onset of that aura. Sometimes patients may have an aura without even any pain in the head or headache, and that's called acephalgic migraine that normally happens in older people. Typically, the aura is visual, and what you would see is some jagged edges of the pictures that you're seeing, that you're looking at, and or some melting of whatever you're seeing, and or metamorphosia, where there's like a change in the shape of what you're seeing. And normally this would go away within minutes or so. Now this is thought to be uh, representing some cortical spreading depression in neurophysiological terms. You may have noticed there are some triggers that can cause your headaches at times or may aggravate them. And some of those may include things that you like very much, such as chocolate, cheese, particularly aged cheese, uh, pickled food, uh, uh, processed meat, uh, MSG. Now in women, menstrual cycles can sometimes aggravate migraine headaches. And the weather conditions, whether it's humid or sometimes with the sandstorms, may actually at times aggravate some allergies and thus may aggravate some of the migraine headaches. Now, irregular eating and sleeping habits, as we mentioned in the very beginning, can also induce migraine headaches, not to mention stress. If you like chocolate very much, be aware that it may trigger your headaches. You may want to eat in moderation. While migraine by itself, oral contraceptives by themselves, or smoking by itself, may be a slight risk factor for cardiovascular disease or a stroke. It is very important that you know that when you have more then one factor, that is, if you have two factors, that can increase the chance significantly. If you have three factors, so in other words, if you are a migraineur and you smoke and you use oral contraceptive pills, then the chances 
are significantly increased for cardiovascular disease, even in younger people. So my advice to women with migraine is to never smoke, and if you're using oral contraceptive pills, please go ahead and use some other methods for contraception, just so that you can reduce the chances for cardiovascular disease. Normally, we treat them, like I said, you sleep it off and you stay in a dark room, no noise, no lights, but also you can use over-the-counter uh, medications, uh, medications that contain paracetamol. At times, when it is acute and severe, uh, your doctor may prescribe some of the triptans. There are many triptans, and the important thing is you have to take those triptans within minutes from the onset of the headaches so that they are most effective. A second line drug, if triptans do not work, then antiemetics, these are drugs that prevent the nausea and the vomiting, and or corticosteroids. And lastly, your doctor may have to resort to using some opiates in case the headache is very severe. Always do what you can, when you can, and do not worry about anything you cannot do, and always take care of your health.